Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. This is a video on divisibility rules. So for the first couple of pages, you're going to take notes with me. And then you have a chance to pause the video and try some problems on your own. And then at the end, you can see how you did. All right, so what exactly is a divisibility rule? Well, it's a shortcut to determine if a number is a factor of another number. All right, so we're going to learn the divisibility rules of every number over here in this little table. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And you might be wondering, why are we learning these rules? Well, the benefits of knowing about the divisibility rules are really the two things. One, it saves time. Let's write that down. And the big one is it helps you reduce fractions, okay? When you guys learn about fractions, or more particularly when you learn how to multiply fractions, you're gonna to need to know how to reduce fractions. So this helps with the reduction of fractions. All right, so let's go over the, the rules here. So you know a number is divisible by two. This one's easy, okay? Well, basically, if the number is an even number. So if it ends in zero, two, four, six, or eight, you know that two is a factor. So for the number 450, we know that uh, it ends in zero, so it's even. So that means two is definitely a factor of 450. Now, three, this is actually my favorite rule. The, the, the way that works for three is you add up the sum of the digits. And if that number is divisible by three, it works. So for, so for 450, if I add four plus five plus zero, notice I get nine, okay? And three can go into nine exactly three times. So because that's the case, I know that three is a, is a factor of 450. So that means 450 is divisible by, by three. All right, the number four, uh, what you have to do is you have to focus on the last two digits. So 50. And if four can go on 50 evenly, you know four can go into 450. And four cannot go into 50 evenly, so four is not a factor. All right, the rule for five, that's an easy one. Uh, if it ends in a zero or a five, uh, five is a factor, and this ends in a zero, so that's the case. All right, the number six basically states that if two and three are both factors of the number, well, so is six, right? Okay. Um, so in this case, we know that two is a factor and three is a factor. So that means six is also a factor. Um, the rule for number nine is very similar to number three, where you add up the digits, but the sum has to be divisible by nine. All right. So four plus five plus zero is nine and nine divided by nine is one. So it goes in evenly. So that means nine is a factor as well. And then finally, the rule for zero, or sorry, for 10, excuse me, is if the last digit is a zero. So for 450, it ends in a zero, so that means 10 is also a, a factor. All right, let's turn the page. Let's do uh, one more set together. So we have the number 135, and I want to know which of these numbers um, are factors of, of 135. And again, I gave you the table over here. So for two, again, if it's an even number, two is a factor, and we have the number 135, so it's not, right? So that goes in the no category. All right, the number three, add up the sum of the digits. So one plus three plus five gives you nine, and nine is a factor of three, right? So that means, uh, well, excuse me, three is a factor of nine, so it, it works. So that one is a yes. All right, the rule for four, look at the last two digits. And four cannot go into 35 evenly, so that's a no. Five, well, it has to end in a zero or a five, right? So this one ends in a five, so that's a yes. Now the rule for six, remember, is that both two and three are factors. And notice two is not a factor, so that automatically means that six is not a factor. The rule for nine, again, same as three, where you add up the digits, but the numbers have to be, the sum has to be divisible by nine. And uh, 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9. And of course, 9 divided by 9 is 1. So that works. And finally, for 10, uh, it has to end in a 0. And in this case, it does not. It ends in a 5. So that would be a no. All right. So with a little bit of practice, um, these rules can really save you a lot of time, especially when you're reducing fractions. So why don't you pause the video and try the Your Turn Now problems. And when you're done, hit play. You can see how you did. All right. Good luck.
All right, welcome back. Let's see how you do with these practice problems. So, uh, the number 240 uh, is divisible by 2 because it ends in a 0, so that's a yes. Uh, the number 3, well, if I add up 2 plus 4 plus 0, we get 6, and 6 is divisible by 3 twice, so absolutely that's a yes. All right, the number 4 is the last two digits, and here we have 40, and 4 can go into 40, so that's a yes. Uh, the rule for 5, if it ends in a 0, it works, or 5, and this one ends in a 0, so that's yes. The rule for 6 is if both 2 and 3 are, are factors, and that's a yes, so it's going to be a yes for that one. Now, for number 9, remember the sum of the digits has to be divisible by 9, and our sum is 6, right? And 9 can't go into 6 evenly, so that's a no. And then finally, for, for 10, has to end in a zero, and in this case, it is a yes. All right, so let me, again, to show you how this stuff is, is used uh, in mathematics. Let's say, for example, you have a fraction like 111 over, say, 303, and you wanna know how to reduce this. Well, in order to, to reduce the fraction, okay, you have to come up with a common factor that, both, that goes into both 111 and 303. And when the numbers are kinda big, it's kind of hard to get started. Well, that's where these rules come in. So, for example, if I wanted to divide 111 and 303 by the same number, well, I could use the rule for 3, right? Because I know that 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and 3 goes into 3. And also, 303, well, 3 plus 0 plus 3 is 6, and 3 goes into 6 as well. So I could start off by dividing each one of these by 3, and once you do that, it gets easier from, from there. All right. All right. How'd you do?